Hello, Dave. Hello, hey there. hello. How are you? Hey, we're we're okay considering. All Consider- right, yeah, we're we're good. Yeah, we're sad about Tony's problem, you know. And oh yeah, I put it on a website, and it's yeah, it's not never good to hear stuff like that. Get over that. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, we we can't do the tour next year, as everybody knows now. Yeah, because um, Tony just can't put himself through that. He's in so much pain at the moment, and you know, um, taking stuff for it. But um, yeah, so we just leave him alone, and uh, hopefully he can get into a, being a better place pretty sooner than later, and then we can, you know, think about doing stuff in the future again, touring wise. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. at the moment um, we, we're just not able to think like that. At the moment, we just wanted to get well again. Yeah, if he can. Yeah, can. yeah. If it's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. That's the important thing now. You know, looking after our friend. You know, we I mean? make sure he's, he gets all the support he can, and and you know, the the the, the support from the fans has been incredible. There's so many lovely messages coming through from yeah. fans, which I know Tom really appreciates. You know, so I think they're on our side. They understand the situation. So it's. Oh, I think everybody's with us. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's been with Tony. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't they be? You know that we are, we have the best fans ever. We do, yeah, and they're very understanding people. And I'm sure they can just wait a bit longer. <laughs> well, they'll have to. <laughs> Nothing much we can do about it, people. Sorry, we're in bits about it. You know, because what oh, you yeah. do, you make an album, you go out on the road and, and promote the album, and play all the old songs, and everybody has a great time. And we was looking forward to it so much, you know. Um, but now he's, oh well. It upsets me talking about it. It really does. Well, that's the thing, though, isn't it? When you know, when you've been going as long as you guys have, and you know, I became a fan in '85. So when you, you know, yeah. you're a fan of a band for so long, it's almost like you become sort of like a family member. You know, you get to, even though you've not met in person, even though we've seen you live on the stage and so on, you do seem yeah. like a part of the family. So when news comes out like this, you know, it does yeah. have that ripple effect on the fan base, and then you know, it's great everybody's behind you, which are, you know, of course they are because. You know, you've been a, a part of people's lives for so long. And I think yeah. we have got that with our fans, you know, this is the lovely relationship that we have with the fans, you know, they've kind of been with us a lot from the very early days. Mm. And, you know, you see them on tour every year and they do become friends, you know. You yeah. hang out with them after the show and have a drink with them and chat with them. And it's, you know, it's definitely a two-way thing, you know. Right. I think that's probably what's helped the band continue as long as it has, the fact yeah. that we have that relationship with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying with on the Storytellers Night, and that's that's how I first discovered Magnum. But that that was back in the day, you know, when you go into a record store and you'd be flicking through, and it was the album covers that drew, that drew you in. I thought, wow, yeah. this looks amazing. I'm going to buy this, and then of course you get the added bonus that the music's bloody good too. So that was that was always a plus. So then that's it. Then you're a Magnum fan. And it was amazing because because Rodney Matthews is still doing the art and he's doing the art for the upcoming album that's that's out in January. Here, here comes the rain. Yes. Uh, I mean that must be good having that continuation as well, and it's all all part of. People can see immediately. Oh, there's there's a Magnum album. You know that have been yeah, with you for so long. You can't miss a Magnum album in the shops, in the rack. Yeah, I've done it myself. You know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're lucky to have uh, Rodney back once again. He wasn't available last time for the mm. Monster Roars. So uh, Tony went in a different direction with the, the photograph. But it was a great makeup job. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. uh, people thought it was artwork, but no, it's, it's a photograph. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, but um, we got Rodney back again. Great. And that's where he belongs with us. Uh, uh, you're our artist, nobody else. <laughs> and we've got that many albums with him over the years. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I love his artwork. Uh, he's really in tune with Tony's um, thoughts and l- what the lyrics mean, you know, what's behind yeah. the words. And he's totally in tune with that. And this new album, Here Comes the Rain, the wonderful artwork. Um, yeah. And it's depicting here comes the rain which is we're not talking about raindrops keep falling on my head we're talking <laughs> about coming under fire in a war zone mm. right uh, so a lot he's gone for it big time and uh, this brilliant artwork as everybody will see very soon yeah. on january the 12th and i'll just leave it there for you let your imagination run wild people <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah. first single was out was it last month blue tango as well 
What what sort of input do you have as the, you know as the band with what's going to be the first single, or is it more t- towards the record company? How does yeah, that work? Yeah, pretty much the pretty much the label. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is fine, great. I mean, what do we know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's their department. Yeah. Um, you give them a cup, a few alternatives. You know, like yeah, you know, it's three. Pick one of these three. You know, and they went for um. Uh, Blue Tango, mm. which is a great first single. Uh, they couldn't have be, been mm. better. Yeah, uh, it's real up tempo, uh, slightly rock and roll, twelve bar-y in part. Uh, great feeling about it. Um, it starts with um, a needle, like a jukebox, uh, and yeah. a needle dropping onto a record. Somebody putting some money into a jukebox, and it. <laughs> Like the old jukebox in the old cafes, you know, yeah, on the, yeah. <laughs> that I used to go in all the time. <laughs> uh, brilliant! I, I thought, well, 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 that that just that's Tony's mind going. Oh yeah, let, let's let's make it sound like it's from the fifties <laughs> or the sixties, you know, <laughs> way back when you could do that in a jukebox with the one big speaker in it. <laughs> oh God, yeah, <laughs> and a yeah. Lot, lot of bass. You put the big bottom end coming out of it, you know. Oh, oh Wurlitz is one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so that's how that track starts, um, uh, Blue Tango. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we got another track on there called uh, The Seventh Darkness, which um, is a uh, bit political, but dirty rotten politicians, uh, you know, uh, vote for me, and but uh, I didn't mean what I said, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Two faced, two faced <laughs> politicians. They are out there, not all of them, but someone like that. So I think that's what Tony was on about there. Um, but it's got a we got a brass section once again for that track. We've used them mm-hmm. before, um, uh, the, the two mates of ours on sax and uh, trumpet. Uh, and they're there and again, and he wanted to he, he put a riff, guitar riff, all the, through the song, and he thought that it would be. Uh, amplified by the brass section copying it um, to make it just bigger and yeah. wider. It's perfect for brass. Yeah. I went, oh, oh, yeah. I thought it was pretty good on the guitar until the brass comes <laughs> along. It's even better now, you know. Right? Yeah. It ain't like little brass thing. This is like cop this brass stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, we ain't messing about here. And it perfectly it's perfectly synonymous with Magnum as we are at the moment, you know. Like, you know, try to have something a little bit different in there. Um, you know, because uh, people know what they're gonna get from us, but there's a couple of little surprises in there that they may not mm-hmm. or may not be expecting. But you gotta hear it first, people, yeah. and I'm sure you're gonna love it. And yeah, that's our twenty third album. And what else can I say? Um, was, we're all so proud of it, and it's come together really brilliantly. And it's going to make a lovely present for somebody in the new year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you were saying yeah. you know, about the surprising with the brass and everything. I mean, it must be good for you, you know, after like say album number twenty three, that you're still so yeah. surprised and excited, you know, making yeah. this music, and then new ideas are coming in, and it's getting you excited, which then of course gets us as fans excited too. It was, it was a fun album yeah. to make, and then yeah. I, and I think that enthusiasm, the fun that we had making it, so mm-hmm. it kind of shines through to the people listening to it because you know you can't fake that. You know you've got to have a passion for it, and you've yeah. got to enjoy what you do. You know, yeah. and and that yeah. came through. It was such a fun record to make, and like I said, it's, mm. it's got all the elements of a classic Magnum album. But as Bob mm. said, you know, Tony will always put like some interesting twists on it, which keeps things fresh and keeps things, yeah, you know, yeah. valid. You know, sure, it's... yeah. I mean, yeah, we did the last album two years ago. We don't want to remake that, you know. Mm. You don't want to keep making. Making the same album, that's it. Let's move on. We've got something fresh to bring into yeah. people's lives, you know. Not oh, well, this sounds like the last one. Oh, okay. Oh, I ain't going to get <laughs> that then. What's the point of that? You know, <laughs> you're going to want to buy it, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need the incentive of something new and fresh. Got to keep um, evolving, definitely. But yeah. keeping keeping what you, the core of what you always were and always will be, you know. But it's little changes now and again, uh, and it keeps the the music fresh. It keeps the band alive in people's minds, minute by minute, as mm. they say. You know? Yeah, um, and that's how it needs to be. Otherwise, it, you can be forgotten in this wonderful world that we live in. You can be a, a memory, a, a distant memory sometimes. So you got to keep going. You got to keep doing it. You know. <laughs> 
That's well, that's it. it is, isn't it? Because the music industry has changed so much over the years. But on, on top of that, when you're getting the internet coming in and smartphones and social media, etc., the whole the whole world that you've got to deal with as a musician is just so different to what it used to be. I mean, is there anything that you've had to do to like you know adapt to this? It's completely changed. I mean, when you look at bit in the old back in the day people would buy physical products they'd buy albums and cds and cassettes and i mean i think mm. nowadays we're in like a streaming generation and it's yeah. it's it's a horrible twist because you know people aren't buying physical products so much now so the bands aren't making enough money so they can't afford to go to a studio to make an album yeah. so without people supporting the band you know i mean you what you make of spotify is ridiculous you know so mm, unless yeah. you go buy a physical album you know bands can't afford to keep going and making records so you have to have a passion to do it and i think with us having 23 albums you know we've, we've been very fortunate to have such a great fan base you know that still go out and buy the physical yeah, albums and support yeah. us by doing that you know which means that we can continue to sort of keep making new music because i think i wouldn't want to be a new band now you know oh, with the, no. it must be so hard to be a new band these days and very it's, oh it's all against yeah. you yeah. i mean our gigs have gone in the hardly any way to play at that level you know mm -hmm. um there's, there's, there's the arenas but you know, no band. You haven't got your own audience yet. Where yeah. do you get your audience? Your fan base started in a pub or a club or supporting a bigger band, you know, and that's how you get people to come and listen to you and go, oh, mm. open and tell your mates. And it's a word of mouth thing. That's how we've always been. But you've got to start somewhere. You can't yeah. just start at the NEC. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, no. Um, so, and it's, it's crap because it ain't like it used to be. It's very hard for yeah. new bands to exist it really is unless yeah. they've got a, a very rich uh, backer or a famous connection in a in a, another band or you know a major record label but they've probably never heard of you anyway so you've got no chance yeah. you've got to do it you got to go through the pain to get to where you want to be and it's so hard these days i, I really do feel for bands now these days well, people used to go out and watch original bands back in the day there used to be a scene you know and people would actually yeah. go and watch an original oh, band yeah. before the band and, you know that's how you built your following like bob said yeah, you, know, right. you keep playing and you tell them yeah. that come along but i think nowadays you know it's... playing in, in an original set people just want to go and watch a covers band or a tribute band you know they're, they're not interested in new original bands and it's, it's such a shame because it's mm -hmm. we're very fortunate that we can come in through the era when you you could do that yeah, you know, you could go play and you could be playing five nights a week. You know, playing all original material. Yeah, you know, doing that, but it's, it's just a completely different scene. Yeah. That's it, and then it hones yeah. your craft as well, doesn't it? You know, when you're getting out there on the stage and it's, you know, the fans just getting to see you, and then it's like you say, it's just honing your craft on stage. Which, having seen Magnum many times over the years, you always put on a good show as well. I mean, it must be, must be so good. You have to the be... master story storyteller here, you see. Oh, this, <laughs> this is the thing. This, this, I am this the storyteller. Why... He is the storyteller. <laughs> yeah. story that's, story that's my job. I'm the front man. i got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I can't think of anything more beautiful than performing in front of a magnum audience. Yeah. Absolutely a dream come true. It's, you know, my dearest wish is to get back for us to play again to our fans in the future but that's just going to take time now yeah uh, but that is our wish my wish you know um to aim at that but we'll see how it goes <laughs> yeah uh, fingers crossed being selfish because i want to get back on the stage you know <laughs> that's where we belong you know you do an album you go out on tour yeah that's it what else is there in life <laughs> well that, that's it when you're on tour i've got to ask while i've still got you as well because i know i mean you Traveled the world, you played to so many different people. Uh, oh yeah. But, yeah. but one question yeah. I've got to ask you for memories to go back because, like me, people of a certain age, when you're going back, yeah. your main music and the, the main music TV show was Top of the Pops. I've got to ask: Is there any specific memory you've got about being on Top of the Pops? Oh right, me. Oh, uh, having some mime. <laughs> was that it? Because a few bands that have asked, it was always oh, the mind God, bit mime. that got I to them. Yeah. Miming. Oh, sorry, they call it lip syncing now. Lip syncing. <laughs> I'm a terrible lip sync. I'm a singer, like singers are. We're singers. We're not yeah. mimers. 
Yeah. I mean, but I actually loved being on top of the pops. I don't think Tony was too in enamoured with this. He's like, oh bloody hell! Well, I suppose we better do it then. You know, it's good to for the charts. You know, let's get the <laughs> the record in the charts. Of course, who wouldn't want your record in the top twenty or the top ten? But top of the pops is like a bit. Oh, do I have to do this? <laughs> um, and you do you do a sound check, then you do a. A line check then you do a camera ch check uh, and then you do the broadcast uh and me being me i was singing full on all the way through this uh -huh, but right. you hear the record the records coming out of the speakers and we're just miming like it. that's how it was then i think they did give you an op an option of playing live as uh, as well as miming um mm -hmm. But some, I think some bands went on there, uh, and it wasn't very good. It's better to mime because you spend all that money producing a, a great sounding record, and then you get somebody who don't know what they're doing on the board down top of the pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you're not allowed to use your own guy. You've got to use the BBC bloke, right? But the nice guys, but like rubbish mix, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so you, it's better to mime. It's crap, I know. And I, but I, me, the idiot, I kept singing, and I, my voice went. So it's a good job, oh, no. but you couldn't hear me singing properly because yeah. I was talking, <laughs> trying to do it properly, you know. I mean, you know, it's I was embarrassed to mime. So what am I doing? I mean, this is not right, you know. Yeah. But it, it, went in the, it went up the charts, so it did the job. Well, yeah. <laughs> Great. It it so helped. I can't complain about that. <laughs> good, and yeah. thank you, everybody, for, for buying the, <laughs> the record and putting it in the top 20. Brilliant. Good yeah. on you. Because yeah. people have seen us on top of the pops. It's a wonderful yeah. thing, you know. But te television <laughs> in your living room, you know, before the internet was invented. Brilliant stuff. Anyway, that's my experience at Top of the Box. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I know we're getting close. To, we're getting close to the time. Uh, but I yeah. will I will just repeat to everybody to make sure to buy the album when it comes out in January. I've always been and still am a vinyl guy. So it's got to be the final. Yeah. It's got to be the final. Sit there, drop the needle. Stare at the cover, if you know, bring up the inner sleeve. If there's any lyrics or any yeah. inside notes, that's the magic. That. Oh yeah, isn't it? There's it's plenty of lyrics. <laughs> it's it's an experience. We've got isn't the it? lyrics on the inner sleeves, on the vinyl. Oh, and, well, that's perfect. And the insert of the CD as well. Uh, all the words are there. I mean, we've always done that, and we always will. Yeah, it's great. I love you that. You know, some bands can't be asked, but I think bands like us should do that. It's yeah. important to your fans. They want to read those lyrics. They want to see yeah. great artwork on the inside. Yeah. You know, not just a bit of cardboard. That's rubbish. We do it, try and do it properly for the fans and for ourselves, for our mm. pride. Because well, that's, that's, our, that's, our, that's our, what we do in life. Yeah. Because okay. sometimes you just pull out the album. And you don't even need to put it on. You can just look at the album and then re read the lyrics and so yeah. on as well. It's, it is that having that physical media yeah. is so good. And we, we do coloured vinyl and everything. It's great. Yeah. Fantastic record company we've got behind us, SPV. Yeah. Yeah, Brilliant. Brilliant. It's really Brilliant really record. The, you know, the, they, they, they come across as like a major, but they're, an indi but they're an independent, you know, acting as a major. It's fantastic. In this no, day and age, we're so yeah. lucky to have that support from our yeah, record label. Can't definitely. Say enough about them. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the very best. I've got, along with many, many other people, fingers crossed we get to see you on the road again very soon. But up until that, we've got some new music to listen to, so that, that's a plus so far. So thank you guys for your time. Do appreciate it. And thank You're you welcome. for the music as well. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Thank Thanks, Joe. See you, people. All Bye. Right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ta-da. -bye.